one kind of division. Um, some of the people in the online discussion, too, have also suggested uh, like doing one one integrative paper and and one exam so that you have the best, or I suppose the worst, <laughs> of both worlds. Um, we sometimes in the past have done like, had like, like a midterm exam and a final paper. And um, again, this is just kind of mostly my own issues I could try and work through over the weekend. It's always sort of left me with the feeling that people quit reading after that. And since some of the material that I like the best is in the second part of the course, I find that annoying, but I, I can learn to get over it. Um, <laughs> um, I suppose it's conceivable that we could have like a midterm paper and a final um, exam that covers the whole course. <laughs> You get that three-week period, you know, you have classes, and you know, instead of at home digesting turkey and writing deep thoughts about psychology and aging. Right? Does that sound like fun? Um, okay, let's, um, let's take a vote, and I think, um, let's say, for this, for this point, let's say three options. Um, Two essay exams is one option. Two papers is one option. The final option is, is one of each. And then, you know, see how that goes. Okay, everybody everybody got the picture? Yeah. Uh, no. It would be... The master's students, if it's two papers, it would be two review papers for the master's students as outlined. And for the doctoral students, it would be one review and one empirical. As, as it's, it would be the system that's in the syllabus now. Yeah. And then for the master's students, the last uh, paper would be more uh, service policy focused. The first one could be somewhat too. Okay, everybody clear on what the vote's going to be? I can only handle one question at a time. <laughs> I'm a you know, late middle aged to young old guy now that's you know kept processed. We'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. Um, so okay, everybody in favor of two papers? Raise your hand. One, two, five, right? Okay. All in favor. All in favor of two exams. Raise your hand. So far, it's five to nine. Okay, all in favor of one of each, raise your hands. <laughs> it's, it's five, nine, and five, seven, and nine, I think. Five, nine, and seven, really. <clears throat> you decide. Yeah, you'll be sorry. <laughs> I'll let you know by Monday or Tuesday next week. Maybe I'll, come, maybe I'll have a brainstorm over the weekend and we'll do something entirely different. <laughs> um, okay, now that, the, now that the decisions are done, let's, let's, uh, we'll do the introducing ourselves thing. Um, when you guys introduce yourselves, we'd like to get your, your name, uh, what program you're in, and something, something quick about why you're interested in aging, and then something maybe personal and interesting about yourself. Okay, I'll start though. Um, you probably figured out already. I'm Bob Knight. <laughs> I'm a professor in gerontology. I've been here since I've been here 21 years. 
I've taught this class um, most of those years. And in my earlier and poverty-stricken days, sometimes in the summer, too, although it's been a long time since I've taught it in the summer. Um, I'm a clinical psychologist by training. I got interested in older adults. Early on, actually, in, in between college and graduate school, I, I worked for three years. And the second job that I held, I worked for a small social service agency in, in East Central Indiana. And it was just, um, it was in the early 70s when the area, the local area agencies on aging uh, were formed by a revision of the Older Americans Act. And um, the executive director of our agency decided that he wanted to have the area agency for this county in Indiana. It's Madison County, but it's not the one that the Bridges of Madison County was written about. And uh, we literally sat around his desk one morning and drew straws, and I got the short straw. <laughs> And, and I wasn't happy about it. And uh, then I started working with um, older adults who were like community activists and politically active in the community and stuff and just uh, ended up really enjoying the experience. Um, uh, we organized the County Council on Aging. We did get, we did get the, um, our agency designated as the area agency. And, um, and it kind of turned my attitudes about aging around. Um, and then I went to grad school in clinical psych. And, and the, next, the next piece of randomness in this story is that while I was going to grad school, our faculty changed their mind in alternate years about whether we should specialize or generalize. And I happened to hit a specialty year. <laughs> so there was all this pressure to do like specialty quals and specialize in something. And so I thought, well, what do I want to specialize in? And I thought, well, I kind of like the older people, so let's try that out. So I started specializing. In, and older people. It was right around the time that the uh, National Institute on Aging was formed. So the faculty were, even like faculty that didn't know me, were like really supportive and encouraging about working with, with aging. Um, and all through grad school, I thought it would be about a 25, 35% specialty. And then um, by the end of my internship, um, the agency that I was working for, I was in community mental health before I came down here. And uh, the agency I was working for had uh, developed a, an outreach program for older adults. And I went into a postdoc year where I specialized in work with aging. And I've been nearly or, or in fact, 100% aging focused like ever since. It's been both fun and extrinsically rewarding. For one thing, if I you know, like specialized in depressed housewives or something, I'd probably be a psychologist in Oklahoma or Arkansas or something. I grew up in Arkansas, so I'm not making fun of flyover states. But, and it's a good idea if you don't either, by the way. I get sensitive about it sometimes. <clears throat> but uh, but it's, been a gr it's been great. I think it's still a, a really rewarding area to be in, uh, both intrinsically. Uh, it's just fun and lots of interesting topics. And the field's new enough that you can get into a lot of different things. Um, I worked in community mental health for about a decade and then came down here. I was about five years into my job in the Ventura County Mental Health Services and was starting to get a little bit bored for various reasons. And I was looking around and thought, well, I kind of want to stay in Southern California. And the only job in Southern California that I want besides the one I have is Steve Zaretz, and he'll never leave USC. And then Steve Zaretz left and went to Penn State, and I got his job. <laughs> Uh, I've been, been here ever since, and uh, generally it's been a lot of fun, both between uh, uh, gerontology and in psychology. Um, and uh, I do research. Uh, some of you probably already heard this in orientation. I've done research for a number of years on uh, caregiving, particularly stress and coping models, and particularly cross-cultural differences in stress and coping models. Uh, uh, one thing that intrigues me uh, research-wise and conceptually is just cross-cultural differences and how big or how small they actually are. <coughs> and then more recently, I've gotten interested in um, age differences and the way that emotion affects thinking and how that plays out in understanding and eventually in treating mental disorders. And, uh, and then really recently, along with a colleague of mine at the University of Edinburgh, um, we both have been playing around